this is the instructional video for both the 112th scale and the 124th scale dining room table kit from Bentley House Minis. The 112th instructions will be first and the 124th scale will start at 11 minutes into this video. To start off, you will have three pieces of mat board for your 112th scale table. Begin by removing the B piece and set it to the side. You're going to start with all the pieces that are marked with a C and all the pieces that are marked with an A. This makes it easier if you leave them laid out in this direction. You're going to need a sharp craft knife to cut through the tabs that are holding them into the mat board sheets. Once they're removed, you can lay them out on your table so that the pieces marked A1 are across from the pieces that are marked C1. This is how they will look once everything's cut out. You're going to be gluing the C pieces inside the engraved area on the A pieces. Start by adding glue to the opposite side that does not have any engraved markings, and then place it inside the engraved rectangle you see on the A piece. Make sure that the holes that are going to be where the legs are inserted are lined up. I'm using my desktop surface to make sure that the two pieces are aligned on the lower end. It's a good idea to put them underneath something heavy while they're drying. You're going to do the same thing for the pieces that are marked with the number two and the pieces that are marked with a number three. While those are drying, you can remove all of your pieces that are marked with the letter B. Continue to keep them lined up as we have been doing throughout this process. The letter B pieces are going to be glued on the opposite side to the letter C pieces, so I'm flipping them all over. These are going to cover up the holes you can see and serve as the top of your table. You are going to see a slight reveal around three sides of the table as you glue them on. Add some tacky glue, glue them to the top, and then allow it to dry. Again, I'm going to use the surface of my table to make sure it is all aligned on the flat end. This is what you should see once it's glued down. I'm going to do the same thing for the middle piece of the table. This is going to be the removable leaf that's inside the table. You will have a reveal on either side, and I'm going to do the same thing for the third piece or the bottom piece of the table that you see now. I'm going to again let all of these dry underneath something flat and heavy. Now I can remove two pieces that are marked D1 and one piece that is marked E. These are going to create the skirt that goes around the bottom of your table. Begin by adding glue to the very edge of piece E and glue it up against the end of the C piece as you see here. Then you can add glue to one of the D1 pieces and add it to the side of this part of the table and then add the other one to the opposite end. This is going to make a border that goes around three edges of the C piece that you previously glued. Here is how it looks once they are all in place. You will notice that the D pieces cover the two ends of the decorative E piece. You're going to do the same exact steps for the other end of the table using two pieces marked D3 and the other piece that is marked E. Now you have both ends of the table completed. To work on the center piece that is going to be the removable leaf, you're going to use two pieces marked D2. Cut those out and add them to either side, just like we have been doing, and this is what it will end up looking like. Now you can remove all four pieces marked F and all four pieces marked G. You're going to be adding a small amount of glue to the tab that's on the G piece and inserting that into the F piece. Once it's glued together, it's going to look like a small little photo frame. Make sure you dry fit so you know how it needs to be glued together. Do this four times so you have four pairs of FG pieces. After they've dried, we're going to add it to the bottom of our table leaf. You're going to add glue to the bottom of the F piece and it is going to sit just inside this small engraved rectangle on the bottom of the table leaf. Add the remaining three, making sure that the small triangles are facing away from each other. This is what's going to hold the table leaf in place. If your triangles are facing inward, they will not fit correctly on the table slides, which we are about to work with. Now that all of your mat board pieces should be empty, we're going to move to the accessory bag, which has your 3D printed pieces. There will be four table legs and one set of table slides. The table slide will either be printed in brown or gray because it will be difficult for the paint to stick because this is a moving piece. 
it will come together, but you can pull them apart. To make sure that your table slide moves back and forth really smoothly, you're going to want to move this slide against each other really quickly several times until you're happy with how smooth it moves. You can also use sandpaper to make a smoother movement between the slide pieces. However, you don't want the slide to be too loose, otherwise the table won't have enough strength to stand up. So it does need to be a rather tight connection. Once you're happy with the movement, you're going to glue the slides in place. You will find engraved outlines on the bottom of the pieces of the table where the slides need to be glued down. The thin, flat pieces will need to be glued against the mat board, so if for some reason they are not fitting snugly against the mat board, you may have your slide upside down. I have found that tacky glue makes a really strong connection between the 3D printed pieces and the mat board table. Make sure you have it lined up as straight as possible, otherwise your table may not slide together in the correct manner. I suggest that you allow these slides to dry for an hour before you do anything else on the table. This will allow enough time for the tacky glue to connect the pieces together and not have any chance of them moving. After the hour is complete, you can carefully slide the table together to make sure that the two pieces connect and the table looks correct. This is going to be the shortened version of the table without the leaf. It may take a bit more force to get your table together the first time. If the two sides of your table are not coming together flush, you may have to remove the slides and try again, trying to get them a little bit more straight. While my table continues to dry, I'm going to prepare my 3D printed legs. They come hooked together with a very thin layer of plastic. It's easy to pull them apart, however you may have to remove some of that excess plastic. It's easy to use a pair of flush cutters but you can also use a craft knife with a sharp blade, just make sure to cut away from your hand. Once the excess plastic is removed, you can use sandpaper to sand these if desired. Speaking of sanding, sanding the table is a little bit easier before adding the legs, so if you would like a rounded look to the edge of your table, I suggest sanding it at this moment. Once you're happy with the finish, you're going to put the two halves of your table back together and we're going to add the 3D printed legs into the holes that are cut into this piece. The legs will also touch the table skirt that we constructed, so make sure to add glue in that area as well. We are doing this with the shortened table because it's easier to tell if the legs are straight when they're closer together. Use your eyes to check and make sure that the table legs are as straight as possible, and if you need to adjust them, do it while the glue is still wet. I highly suggest letting the legs dry overnight so that they are as strong as possible before continuing on to the painting stage. I'm going to be painting my table in separate pieces just for the base coat. I highly suggest doing a very thin coat of acrylic paint that has not been watered down. Any extra water can possibly warp your mat board, so it's best to lay down a very thin coat first. Once I'm happy with my base coat all over the table, I can continue on adding other embellishments or other styles of paint that I would like over the entire thing. You can paint the 3D printed table slides, however anywhere that the two pieces slide together the paint will come off, so that is why they are done in a colored filament. Now that my base coat is complete, I'm going over the entire top of the table trying to get a wood grain effect. I'm doing this with the pieces together, however while the paint is drying I want to separate it out so that my leaf doesn't get glued to the other pieces. I'm going to be doing a gloss coating to give this a shiny finish. I highly suggest if you decide to do this to put down some paper protecting the table slides so that no extra material gets into the slides and causes problems with them sliding together. Once the finish is done, this is how my table is looking. I forgot to mention that the star and hexagon symbol on the bottom of the table are there so you can easily match up which way your table leaf is going, especially if you're doing some kind of intricate painting or you want to make sure your wood texture lines up. I also did another table. This one is permanently glued together, so if you don't want to mess with the removable leaf, you can do these same exact steps, but just add glue and add your leaf in. I did make sure to accentuate my leaf lines, however, so it does look still like a removable leaf table. 
While this table does work with most mass-produced 1 12th scale chairs, Bentley House Minis does have chairs in the store if you do need them. And this table was designed specifically so that six chairs could fit around the table and they can all be pushed in at the same time without touching each other. So that was an important design feature of this table. If you're planning to keep this table in its shortened form more often, it does comfortably fit four chairs around each side. This would be a great piece for anyone who likes changing up their dollhouse setting so that you have a choice of where your table can go. It can be a smaller breakfast table or it can be a larger dining room table. It can fit your dollhouse needs. And then you can find a small doll bed to store the table leaf under if you need to. Now we're going to move on to the 124 scale table directions. Unfortunately, the 124 scale is not a removable leaf table, but it can still have the appearance of one. The kit comes with two laser cut cardstock pieces and we're gonna start with all of the A pieces and the piece marked C. Cut those out with a sharp craft blade. The A pieces are going to be glued underneath the piece marked C. I will show you what I mean by that. You're going to add C so that you can see the engraved diagonal marks on top and make sure it is lined up within the engraved lines on piece A1. Now we can add piece A2, which is the fake table leaf, and make sure that the edges are lining up as you are gluing them down. You can create the gap between your leaf and your other table pieces to be as wide as you want them to be. After you add the final A piece onto the back of the C piece, let all of that dry underneath something flat and heavy. Now we're gonna remove all of the pieces that were marked B, B1, B2, and B3. These are going to work as the tabletop for your pieces. These are going to have a reveal around the three edges of your table, just like they did for the 1 12th scale. I am lining it up with the flat part of my table along where the leaf connects. I'm going to add all of those pieces so that when I'm done, it looks like this. This will be our completed tabletop. Once that's dry, we can flip it over and add our table skirt. I'm starting with piece E, which is going to be the skirt edge along the shorter end of the table. I'm butting that up against piece C and allowing that to dry. This is how it will look once it's glued down. I'm going to add the other E piece on the other end, and then I'm also going to be grabbing these pieces that are marked D. They do have an engraved cut line where you can cut them apart if you want more definition in your table leaf. But for ease of construction, I did leave them together to be one long piece that goes against the side of piece C. Once they're all connected, this is what your 124 scale table skirt will look like. Make sure to remove any excess glue you can see after you've glued it all down and allow this to dry. Now we're going to work on the legs. There are going to be three pieces marked F and three pieces marked G. You need to make sure that you keep them separate and know which is which. I'm going to cut out the F pieces. Be careful when you do this because they are very long and spindly. The F pieces all have a notch at the bottom of the center bar and the G pieces all have a notch at the top. I'm going to glue them together so I have a triple thickness for each piece. This will be a little bit fiddly, but adding the tacky glue between the layers of paper makes them much stronger. While the glue is drying, make sure that both the legs and the center bar are lined up as best as possible. This will give you the best look in the end. I'm starting with the triple thick piece F and I'm going to add glue all along the upper edge. I'm going to glue it along this diagonal line, making sure that my table legs are snug up in the corner of the table skirt. Push them down so that it's flat against the table underside. This is what it will look like. Now we're going to use piece G. This notch is going to fit into the previous notch we glued down on piece F. Make sure that it's fitting snugly, and then you can add some extra glue in the center so that you know that the pieces will stay put. This will help you keep your table legs straight, and they will also be much stronger in this fashion. So this is the final look of our 124 scale table, and now it's time to paint.
I also have 124 scale chairs, which fit very same way that I showed you with the 112 scale chairs. Again, I suggest that you use very thin layers of acrylic paint as you are painting these so that nothing warps. This is cardstock paper after all. It also helps if you paint both sides of the paper at the same time so there isn't an unequal amount of moisture. So here is my red table. I think it needs a few more coats of paint, but you get the idea of how it will end up looking. It's a really fun piece to add to my 1930s kitchen collection. If you want to know more about the removable leaf 112 scale table or the non-removable leaf 124 scale table, you can go to my website bentleyhouseminis.com. You will also find many other 1930s style kitchen kits, which make a really fun scene. Thanks for watching.